BYD's latest new electric SUV is rad. It is really cool. Yeah, the Addo 3, I own one. It was a good car, but honestly, I didn't really desire it. I saw it and I thought, it's EV, it's all right, you know, it'll do the job. This car, on the other hand, this new electric car from BYD, I first saw it and I went, I desire that car. I'd love to own one. Here's why. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. And you know what, guys? I've been talking about BYD on this channel well before 99% of BYD fans even existed. I'm not talking about the Chinese, by the way. The Chinese have known about BYD for a long, long time. I'm talking about those in the West. So BYD is a relatively new brand outside of China. We forget that. It hasn't been around for very long at all, and it's grown incredibly quickly. Now, I believe that if BYD were to sell this model outside of China, this would be a really popular car, not only in Europe, but more so, even more so in places like uh, Israel, Australia, New Zealand, and America. It's, you know what, it looks, it kind of looks like a Bronco, but even better, it's fully electric. And, you know, it's almost like a semi-luxury car, but it's priced very, very well. Now, I don't know about you, but I love the design of this car. I just think it looks fantastic. I'm not a real huge fan of the design of some of BOD's cars. I really like the practicality of them. For example, the Dolphin, you know, it's not bad. It's a really practical kind of shape. It reminds me of the Honda Jazz. The Honda Jazz boot size is twice the size of the boot in a Toyota Corolla and things like that matter to me. I'm trying to fit my boards and my kids' bikes and things in the car. And I'm like, how big's the boot? How big's the boot? Well, here's the thing. The Auto 3 boot, it's, um, it's actually really small. But this is different. This is more of a box-shaped car. So you're going to get a lot more stuff in the car. Now, apparently, this vehicle is going to be just a little bit bigger than the Auto 3, but a lot taller. And it's going to have a lot more interior space as a result. Prices for the new Fang Cheng Bao or FCB Bao 3, so it's called the Bao 3 from BYD, have revealed what it actually looks like. It costs between 27,300 to 41,000 US dollars depending on the model. So the price is actually pretty similar to the price of the seal. So the BYD seal, that gives you an idea of where this could be priced potentially if it was to go on sale in other countries. 27,000 to 41,000 US dollars, similar pricing to the seal. This is the third model in the Fang Cheng Bao lineup. So Fang Cheng Bao is BYD's new brand. Very unusual name. Obviously, um, it's not gonna resonate with Western buyers. Maybe they'll call it something else outside of China. Anyway, the FCB is a new brand under BYD focused on off-road SUVs. So this is, Basically, a medium-sized off-road electric SUV. It sits between the Denza and Yang Wang when it comes to pricing. So that means that BYD now has four brands. BYD, Denza, which is its joint venture with Mercedes, but BYD own almost all the companies, so it's really just a BYD brand. They make all the product. And then it has Yang Wang. And then, of course, it also has FCB, or Fang Cheng Bao. So four brands... Lots of cars under each brand. You can see why I get a bit confused by all the different models. I can imagine people who don't follow the brand very closely would also be rightly confused as well. You think you need almost a photographic memory to remember all the different models that they have across all their plug-in hybrids, across all their brands, and of course, all their EVs as well. But anyway, there is a bigger version of this car, right? And it's called the FCB5. So this is the FCB3 or the Bow 3. That's the Bow 5. And the Bow 5 is pretty much the same car, but it's bigger. At this point in time, though, there is only a plug-in hybrid version of the bigger one. So I haven't talked about that on the channel because I'm not interested in plug-in hybrids, guys. They are incredibly unreliable. That's a statistical fact. I'm not giving you emotions. I hate emotions when it comes to actually analyzing EVs and cars and products. Statistically speaking, plug-in hybrids are much more unreliable than EVs and much more prone to fire. So I don't really focus on plug-in hybrids on the channel. Anyway, getting back to the Bow 3. Car News China says that the Bow 3 is going to have retractable door handles and broad wheel arches covered in plastic elements to really give it that kind of like off-road look and feel. From the back, the Bow 3 has a spare wheel mounted on the trunk door. That's obviously a very much off-road theme that we see across vehicles like, you know, Toyota and Nissan off-road vehicles. 
It also has two horizontal LED tail lights and a rugged looking rear bumper. Another feature is a twin roof spoiler. What exactly is the size of this vehicle? We don't know exactly. We just know that it's going to be a little bit bigger than the 803. So yeah, it's, you'd classify it as maybe being just a little shorter than a Tesla Model Y, clearly much taller in terms of the body. It doesn't have that coupe shape at the back. So if you're wondering how big the Addo 3 is, to give you some idea on how big this could be, it's 4,455 millimeters long, 1,675 millimeters wide, and 1,615 millimeters tall. Its wheelbase is 2,720 millimeters. This means it's technically classified a small crossover or small SUV. Powertrain, what's it gonna have? Well, apparently, unlike its bigger brothers, the Bauer 5 and the Bauer 8, it will have a twin motor or will drive. So one motor in the back, one motor at the, at the front. It will also have a lithium ion phosphate blade battery, which comes from, of course, its company Fin Dreams, which BYD own. We don't know the power output of the Bauer 3. We don't know any other specifications or details, but either way, you know what? I think this is gonna be a fantastic car. It's going to be all-wheel drive capable. It's one of very few all-wheel drive EVs. It's going to be relatively affordable. It looks really good. Ticks all my boxes. I think it's a really good size and shape. Hopefully, they bring the car to markets outside of China. I think it would be a huge hit. Now, do you, do you guys agree with me on this? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And thank you for watching.